Hello guys, long time no see. If you're new here, my name's Amanda. If you saw the title of this video, you already know that I am taking you along on my daughter's first birthday party prep. I've already been sharing some things that I've been doing over the past several weeks. But now it is a couple days before the party, so it's really crunch time. Time to decorate, time to make all the desserts, which is really what I'll be showing you. And then in a separate vlog, I'll do like a little one year recap and some highlights from her party. Cause I'm not gonna vlog during her party, maybe just like take some clips here and there to show you how it all came together. But yeah, today I don't have that much time. It is already four o'clock and Maggie's taking her second nap. She's been asleep for a while. So what I'm gonna do right now is work on her birthday cake. I am going to make the frosting for it. I actually already baked her cakes and some cupcakes the other day as well as made sugar cookie dough and put it in the freezer. So over the next couple days I'm going to be working on all the desserts because I really have to break it up into small steps or it'll never happen because each thing is so time consuming. So today is the cake. I'm going to shape it into somewhat of a circular shape or a sphere spherical shape and I'm going to frost it. And then the cupcakes, I'm not gonna frost until the day of the party, but I'll use the buttercream that I'm making now to do that. The sugar cookies, I'll probably punch them out and bake them tomorrow and then decorate them on Friday or Saturday because that's gonna take a few hours, probably. My practice round took a long time, so we'll see how long this takes. But yeah, let's get started making some buttercream frosting. I am following Chell Sweet's buttercream frosting recipe. So I'll link everything in the description that I can if you're interested. And we're just gonna get started on carving this cake out. I'm starting with four sticks of butter, two cups of butter. And we're just going to beat this on low for 30 seconds to smooth it out before we add in our powdered sugar. Now I'm gonna add in a whole tablespoon of vanilla extract and half a teaspoon of salt and mix it in on low. And this is unsalted butter, so make sure you use unsalted so that you can really control the saltiness because you don't want salty frosting. All right, now I'm gonna very slowly add in two pounds of powdered sugar gradually, and then about halfway through, I'm gonna add in three tablespoons or so of heavy cream so that it keeps it from being too thick. I'll start really small because I'm not sure how crazy this is gonna get. All right, this looks like a pretty good texture, so now I'm gonna add in my orange food coloring. Okay, I'm pretty happy with my frosting color. I'm going to carve the cakes before I frost them into a nice shape. I'm going to frost the layers, stack them on top of each other and do a crumb coat, and then put that in the freezer, and then probably later tonight, I'll do like the nice final coat of the orange. Now I am starting to think that this little orange smash cake might actually work out. It's looking pretty good so far. So let's hurry up and frost the, between the layers and then do the crumb coat, put it in the freezer, and then Maggie should be waking up any second.
I'm sorry, but I'm feeling so proud of myself. This cake looks pretty amazing. And I did it in less than one nap. Well, I baked the cakes a different day, but decorating so far. For the top, I'm going to do pre-made fondant leaves, which I got the fondant at Hobby Lobby. And then I got these really cute stamps. So for the cupcakes, also I'm gonna frost them in the orange and then put the fondant leaves on top. And then for Maggie's cake, I'm gonna do the two big leaves. I think I'm gonna wrap like a pretzel stick in fondant for the little stem. I was gonna use the candle as a stem and I might still, but for now I'm gonna do that so that it looks really cute. And then we'll just replace it with the candle when it's time to sing. And then I just picked up this black writing icing from Target so I can do a little face on it. And then lastly, I'm trying to figure out how I wanna do like little pock marks or divots all over the cake for like the bumpy texture of the orange. So I'm gonna look around in my drawers and see what I have, but I'm feeling so good about it. I'm not gonna show you yet until it's all done. All right guys, it is day two of decorating, or should I say dessert prep for the party. I did work on the cake again last night and I'll show you how it's looking. I'm very proud of it, but today I'm gonna to be punching out the sugar cookies. So I already made the dough a couple days ago and I'm following Claire Saffitt's recipe for sugar cookies and royal icing. And I'll link her video below. I don't think she has a written recipe, but I just took notes from her video. I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm just making oranges and then slices of oranges. And I'm also doing, I'm gonna do a monogram, like an M on this scalp square cutter that I have. So we're gonna keep it simple. The biggest takeaway I learned when doing my practice round is that the dough warms up very quickly. And if it's not super cold, when you go to transfer your cutout to the baking sheet, it'll totally morph. So I'm gonna cut my dough into thirds and keep the rest in the fridge. So that is what I'm gonna do now is just work in a third of the batch and then bake one sheet at a time, which is what Claire recommends. Let me show you my cake, a little sneak peek, and then we're gonna punch out these cookies. It's in the fridge, but here it is. I did the fondant leaves and I used the tip of a paintbrush to kind of poke all these little divots into the orange. So I'm gonna do a little face the day of with black, but I didn't want to do it yet in case it bled all over the place or something. So I wanted to keep it looking nice. So yeah, I'm super proud. So like I said, I'm just going to cut this into thirds so that it's easier to work with. Then I will start rolling it out. Let's see, put the rest away. You've all made sugar cookies before. So I'm just going to lightly dust my surface, lightly dust my rolling pin. I'm just going to gently start rolling it out. Keep it moving. So you can even um, dip your cutter in a little bit of flour just to make sure you don't have any sticking. So I'm just gonna space these out as close as I can to get as much as I can. Get a little tiny wiggle. And another really important thing is just having a very even roll out. Doing a third of the dough is definitely gonna be a game changer here. I'm gonna do a semicircle, and then I'll just cut the edge. All right, here's my first batch of cutouts. You're gonna go in for about 10 minutes, and I'm gonna be looking for golden edges and then pale centers. Okay, I just pulled these out after exactly 12 minutes, and you can kind of see a slight golden edge and the middles are still pale. So I'm just gonna let these sit out for a minute before I put them on a wire rack. And then this time around for the second batch, I put the cookie sheet in the freezer so that as I transfer the cookies to the cookie sheet, it'll be very cold. Hopefully that will help with any spreading or puffing because these ones spread just like the tiniest bit. I'm gonna use a fresh baking sheet, not a hot one. And I'll just reuse the parchment paper and put it on the cold baking sheet. And then we're pretty much done. I don't have that much dough and then the scraps I didn't even mess with trying to roll those out again because last time I did that, they got so warm. I put the scraps back in the fridge to chill again before I roll those out. Feeling good about this round of cookies.
here's all my little babies in all their glory, except for this one. This is the cook sample. All right, this is all we had left of the scraps. So I'm pretty happy that we were able to make so many cookies out of one batch. So let's taste what? it. Huh? Maggie's awake, by the way. Hi. Mm. So good. She wants cookies. Just wait till she has her giant cake. Oh my gosh. I gave Maggie a tiny, tiny piece of cookie because she wanted it. And she gave it to Jimmy. Oh, that's nice. That is my task for today. I will catch up with you guys tomorrow because tomorrow we are doing the balloons with my friend Leslie. I'll see you bright and early tomorrow to do all of that exciting decorating. All right, it's the next morning. And my friend Leslie's here and she is a machine and she's getting these balloons put together. It looks so cool so far. So let me show you her progress because I've been entertaining Maggie in the other room because she's scared of the, what do you call it? Pump, balloon, balloon pump. So let me show you what she's got. Look at this amazingness. <laughs> and she added some gold. So we're gonna have like little pops of gold. Wow, she did all this so fast. So our plan is to have an arch over here, and then we're gonna do one above her high chair, right, Mags? She's like, I don't know what to think. Yay, balloons! Oh, you just got your magnet. So I'm excited to see. She's doing such an amazing job. We'll show you the final product in a little bit. All right, here's the update. It looks amazing. And she bought these big orange ones. And we're gonna put leaves on it to be like, here's an orange. Uh-oh. No, that's uh -oh. fine. It's just a rubber band. Oh, it's a rubber band. Okay. That's she knows what she's cute. doing. It's so cute. All right, Leslie just left and she did an incredible job. I'm just like blown away by how amazing these balloons look. She not only did one or two, she did three sets of balloons. So I will show you the mantle, the one that we have for the high chair and then the one in the living room. So here's the one above the mantle. So gorgeous. So we did all, well, she did all varying sizes of balloons. And she added some gold in there because I have that um, O-N-E in gold. So she thought that would look nice together. So we have this above the mantle, amazing. And then we did one above the television as well. I think on that thing is where I'm gonna hang the oranges I made. So this will all be tied together. This is the one that's going to go over her high chair for her smash cake. So we're going to put this out on the porch and then her high chair will go underneath with the banner that I made and then we'll do her cake and some photos and it's going to be so super stunning. And then this is the high chair banner that I made in a different vlog. So I think it's going to look amazing together. All right guys, it's a Saturday before the party, the night before the party. I've just been working outside. It's supposed to rain in the morning, but I think it's gonna clear up by the time the party happens, which I'm really hoping because we wanna put Maggie's balloon arch above me here and then her high chair for the smash cake. And then I set up the deck, kind of how I want it. We are getting our pavers installed very soon. They finally got the building materials in stock. So I was gonna get the deck power washed, but I canceled because we finally are getting the pavers done. So it seems silly to waste the money and we're just gonna destroy our deck in a couple like weeks anyway. I kind of cleaned as best as I could and then we're blocking off the pool a little bit. I mean, it's not totally safe, but it's kind of creating a barrier between the pool for the little kids who are walking. Because the whole reason we're getting pavers done is so that we can get a proper fence installed along the pool for little kids safety. So let me just show you what I have set up. I think it's really cute. And I might bring out some candles and stuff to make it even more of a relaxing atmosphere. Jimmy's out in the yard, but I just brought in some of the furniture from our table and then our couch and armchairs from our table as well. And you can see the deck's pretty dirty, but I'm not gonna worry too much about that. I just want a place for people to come out and eat and spread out. And then on this wall here is where we're gonna put the balloon arch with Maggie's high chair and her banner. And I'll probably put that stuff by the window away. And that's her little balance bike that she's getting for her, uh, her birthday. So yeah, I'm hoping that the weather will be nice. Maybe I'll get a nice surprise. It'll be super clear and partly sunny tomorrow. We'll see. The weather today was absolutely outstanding. So it's a bummer that we couldn't flip-flop the weather. <laughs> 
hoping for the best tomorrow. If nothing else, this porch is covered, so I brought all the furniture under cover. I definitely want to do the cake out here still, so we're sticking with that plan. Okay, we're at the part of the day where I just keep getting crazier and crazier looking. Maggie and I are watching Frozen 2, and Paul's working in the yard. It's pretty late. We already had dinner. I'm gonna start frosting my cupcakes and that way I can leave them in the fridge overnight. And then I'm not gonna do the sugar cookies till Maggie goes to bed because I know that it's a very uninterruptible process because I don't want the icing to harden. So I'm just gonna wait till she goes to sleep. So it might be a little bit of a late night for me, but other than the cookies, I don't have much else to do besides putting it all together tomorrow morning with like the food and setting everything up. Let's make some cupcakes. I did like a vanilla batter with orange zest and orange, fresh squeezed orange juice. So they actually taste like a creamsicle. I didn't taste any, but the batter smelled really good. And then I'm just using the leftover orange buttercream frosting that I made for Maggie's cake. And lastly, I'm gonna do some fondant leaves on top. So it should be super cute and simple. I have so much frosting left over, so I'm gonna make these very overly frosted. Some people don't like frosting. I'm not a huge frosting fan, but I mean, when it's homemade buttercream, it's a little different. You know? This has been in the fridge, and then I just kind of let it come to room temp because it's mostly butter. Maggie's climbing her pickler. I'm just making sure she's okay. Like stir it so that you can get all the air bubbles out. Make sure all the color is the same throughout. So I'm going to stir this up, put it in a piping bag, and then pipe some really big old mounds of frosting onto these cupcakes. Filled my piping bag. I'm gonna use a little bench scraper to kind of push it all the way down so that it doesn't get wasted at the top. those cupcakes in the fridge to chill. Now I'm going to punch out the leaves out of fondant. I might make another batch of cupcakes because I have a box of Funfetti mix just because 12 doesn't seem like that much even though I have cookies and cupcakes. So I don't know, I might just make another batch of 12 just to make sure we have a bountiful amount, a plentiful amount <laughs> of desserts. That'll be super quick because it's just a box, but let me make the leaves now and then put them on the cupcakes. Good morning, it's the day of the party. I was up till 12.30 doing the cookies last night. Sorry I didn't talk over it. You know, Maggie was asleep and I was just trying to concentrate getting up getting the cookies all done. They turned out really well. I'm really proud of them as well. I'm just like super happy that it turned out the way that I envisioned it. 
all things considered, it was only my second time making those kind of cookies. So I think with practice, I can just keep getting better, but I'm really happy with how they turned out. So now I need to shower and get ready, have breakfast with Maggie, just basically setting out all the food. That's all that's left to do. So pretty excited. I think everything turned out really well. I do want to show you a couple more of the things that I've made over the last little while, just to tie it all together. And then we're going to sign off. This is her milestone board and basically the inspiration for the whole party. So I just hung up all of her pictures from zero to 11 months because we haven't done her one year photos yet. And then her outfit for today, I made this little headpiece out of felt. You can see I have a green thumb from decorating. Um, I just used felt and I sewed that. And then I used flowers from the Dollar Tree or leaves from the Dollar Tree. And then I put a pearl on there because Margaret means pearl. And I wanted to incorporate a pearl somehow. And then just some other little touches to make it look a little bit nicer. Wrap the napkin, or wrap the silverware in a napkin and tied it with string. And then I'm just gonna set all this stuff out and that'll be it. All right, so that's gonna be it for this party prep vlog. Thank you guys for coming along with me. I'm pretty excited about all the things that we made. I mean, it's been a labor of love over time. And I think that's my biggest advice is to break things up into small steps. Because if you try to do it all like the day before the party, you'll never be able to do it all and you'll just get frustrated. So kind of map out how you want to do things and just know that, especially with the baking stuff, you can really freeze it in advance, do your research, you know, look at the professionals and some bloggers and get advice from them. But you can really break things up into small steps and it really helps to make it not overwhelming. Yeah, thank you guys for coming along. <clears throat> Excuse me, you can tell I'm really tired. <laughs> But yeah, be looking out for the actual Maggie's birthday video. I'm just gonna do a little highlight reel of her first year of life and some clips from the party. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a comment down below. And let me know what your favorite party decoration is and we'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.